and she founded the company in December of 2012. She's a magna, magna cum laude graduate from Gettysburg College and has had a very successful career as a mortgage broker for 17 years. She gave it all up in 2008 to pursue her love for trading, and she became a very successful trader after she developed her own system for trading that relies on capital, capitalizing on the big moves that occur near the open of the stock market every day. She's built an international business that informs clients on how to trade successfully utilizing her system. All right, and we will get Melissa started. Please give her a warm welcome as we get her screen all set up. Hello there, can everybody hear me? Melissa, I can hear you and I can see your title slide, so you should be all set and good to begin. Wonderful. Thanks so much for having me. Thanks, Renee. We're going to get going right away here. A few minutes late, but I think we'll make up the time. I can see, I think I can see the questions here. Let me just, do I click the, the X or the, the arrow, Renee? To um, if you click the arrow that's like in the little uh, square shape, that will pop out all the questions. Okay, good. All right, very good. Okay, welcome everyone. My name is Melissa Armo and I own a company called The Stock Swoosh. And today I'm gonna to talk about how you can gain an edge to trade. Obviously, if you can gain an edge, it puts you ahead of other people in the market to make money. A lot of people are trading, a lot of people are investing. Everyone's goal is to make money. Not everyone will make money in the market. So who are the people that are able to profit? the people that have an edge or a system or a strategy that they can consistently do to make money. So today I'm gonna to talk about shorting. And actually the, the irony is that <laughs> there was a huge, huge short that just happened right before uh, I got on here, I popped on, which I'm gonna show you the chart in a minute. But if you'd like more information after the webinar, you can email me at melissaatthestockswish.com and you can feel free to give me a call at 929-3200-GAP. So this is CMG. This this just fell off a planet right today like right now this stock just fell off a planet right before so this i'm going to talk about this but this was an option trade okay so you can use what i do which is i trade gaps you can use my method to day trade swing trade or do options now because cmg is very very expensive uh stocks like this google amazon something like this it just makes more sense financially to trade them as options okay because they're very, very expensive to day trade. But I called, this was last week, so in one week I had called to buy puts in CMG on the 11th. Now let's go here to see the day of the 11th. It was this day in here. So I called the put trade here on the 11th, okay? See the candlestick, it was a little small here. And I called the 380, the 375s, whatever people wanted to do. Anyways, it fell off a of planet here. Low in here was 362, and I told people the dream target in this was 350. This is a huge trade. So I'll find out what everybody did in the room tomorrow morning, but this talk about fast profits for a stock to drop like this, 25, 30 points in a week is massive, okay? It is a huge, huge trade. And just to give you an example here without getting into too much detail about options, if you had bought, you know, uh, 10 contracts of this for the 375s, they would have cost you around three grand and your profit today, right now today would be like $21,000. So I'm just to give you some kind of an idea. There's huge profits in shorting, why? Because when stocks wanna drop, okay, and sell off, they happen very fast. They happen fast, they happen quick, and it's panic. So I don't even know what happened here with this. I read the chart that it would drop, but something clearly must have happened in this today for this reaction to happen so late. Because, I mean, this isn't, you know, this didn't gap down this morning. It just fell off a planet now. Does anyone know exactly what happened? Um, but does anyone know exactly what, what happened? You, if, you, if you did, write it in the room. Some kind of news might have happened on this today. But anyways, it proves my point about the fact that selling actually can happen quickly. The thing is that you have to know what to short. And one of the things is that we're in a very bullish market, okay? The market's extremely bullish right now. We're making new highs almost every month. I don't see that stopping anytime soon. So what do you short when, when the market's so strong? Well, it'd be the same thing as if, what would you short if the market turned around and went bearish, okay? You couldn't short everything because still it wouldn't work. You have to find a specific reason that you would get in the trade and you have to get the direction right too. 
One of the reasons I like to short is because short moves happen fast. But the other reason I like to short is because it's very easy for me to spot weakness in a chart. Now, in the case of CMG here, this is a daily chart. I just clipped this back since the beginning of the year, just to quick put this in the slide. But, you know, I look at daily charts when I'm determining what happens and where somebody's going to go. Oh, there we go. Gary just said sickness in one store. But do you know the irony is I called this trade last week. So I read the gaps. I read the gaps in it. And actually, this is a second trade in this that I called this year. Let's see, sickness in a store. It, it doesn't even matter. It's the idea that the stock was trading down. But when something happens like that, it pushes it faster, which is what I love about shorting. So let's get into it here. So how do you get an edge? Focus, okay? And the focus leads to success, and then it's less stress, okay? And obviously, we all want less stress in our lives. For me, it's about doing one trade a day, one stock symbol. That's what gives me an edge. I might do two, but I gotta be honest with you, the days that I tend to do two trades, I still don't make as much money, or I, or I might have a loss day. It's, it's really just about one symbol, one trade. And that is how you have a level of consistency too. And then you're focused and you're not stressed and that it either works or it doesn't. So why are you here today? Well, you're here today to enjoy this lovely webinar. There's many, many speakers talking about lots of different strategies and lots of different things. What I'm gonna say today may appeal to you or may not, okay? You, you know, everybody likes to train different things. So not everybody will like to short, I understand that, but I'm gonna explain to you why I like to short and then you'll listen today and you'll think, well, maybe I think I might like to do this or what this lady says makes sense. So for me, you know, it is about having a controlled risk when I get in the trade. I always use stops. I do have a strategy that I've been teaching now for more than five years and doing for more than eight, almost nine years that I've been trading gaps. And I find a lot of traders that I've been talking to do not want to sit in front of their computer all day. So most of the trades that I do, and I'm talking about the equity trades, not that option, but the day trades that I do, I'm in and out very quickly in the morning between 9.30 and 10. So I'm in and I'm out. I take the train and make the money and I'm out. Today I did hog. We'll look at that today. In and out very quickly. So is it possible to make money in the market? The answer is yes, except for a lot of people don't because they don't have something that they can consistently do over and over and over again to make the money. They want to jump around, okay? And really, not only do I just do one strategy, which is gaps, I mostly short. I mean, I'm not saying I never go long, but I'm saying the fact that I'm mostly short definitely leads to my consistency in my system and profitability, and it definitely gives me an edge. So it's not just the shorting, it's the fact that I'm mostly only shorting. So the only time I'll not do a short is if there really are no shorts to do. If there are no uh, gaps in the morning then that are good bearish gaps, then I might go long. Actually, Netflix was a good long today. So if I hadn't did the hog, Hog worked as a short, but if Hog wouldn't have been there, I might have gone long Netflix. Netflix flew up today with the market. That was a good bullish gap, but I'm mostly short. So that gives me the consistency. I know what I'm looking for, and again, the edge. So my system, if you're interested, is around about an 80% for the year, give or take any given day or week, depending on where I'm at. Sometimes I'm over that, sometimes I'm a little under, but that's what helps me do this. And if you wanna be a career trader, you definitely have, a have, have to have a system that gives you trades every day or most of the days of the week over a calendar year that you can make money. So what I do is I prep in the morning. So for, again, going back to the less stress and the focus, in the morning I get up early and I prepare what I'm doing before the open. So I know the stock symbol I wanna trade even before the market opens. I'm not trading on the fly. So I liked the hog, saw the hog this morning, and knew way before 9.30 and before I took the trade that I was gonna short hog today. Okay, so that kind of focus allows my brain to, to, to see it, to see it clearly, and that's also what helps you make the money. And then I also take size in my trades because I've been trading for a while, and then that's how you can make more as well with the size. So the time of the day is critical. Where do I, when do I trade? I trade in a one minute chart, which we're gonna show here, and I trade in the morning between 9.30 and 10 for the day trades. So that gives me an edge too. Most day traders do not even enter trades till after 10 o'clock. The other thing is, because I'm trading in that short time frame, I'm not, you know, of the willy-nilliness of the market. You know, the market could rally 
later in the day and it doesn't affect me because I'm in and out in the short right into that period in the open so I I don't have to worry about what the overall market's doing I don't have to worry about necessarily economic reports I'm in and I'm out and my trades are not so much affected by the market now there are times where the market is falling where you could maybe hold something later if you want to but I still prefer to trade in that first morning period and I find that most stocks have big moves in that period unless something like CMG which has a news that happens in the middle in the middle of the day okay oh there we go somebody said something about somebody became sick in Virginia ah oh, poor CMG anyways one of the reasons that stocks move so fast, that gap, and I'm going to show you what a gap is in a minute for those of you that don't even know what a gap is. I'm going to show you, so don't worry. But one of the reasons is that institutional money are making the gaps. Let's talk about Netflix. Okay, even though that was a long, Netflix closed last night at one price and literally had a, a more than 10% move up in the gap. And then on the live day, it moved another 20 points. Okay, so the the idea of trading with institutional money and again this is this is really just if you go long or short is if you are with the side of big money it does give you an edge because they move stocks quickly big volatility all of those things mean that you're making money as a trader if you get it right and if you get in the trade and you got to get in the trade before the momentum happens like you would not want to buy netflix right now you would not want to short cmg right now okay you you the trade was last week to take the trade to enter it in the cmg short so you know you have to see the institutional money that it's going to come in and flow in before the volatility and momentum happens and i'm able to do that with my system and that's what gives me an edge otherwise you'd be you'd be, you'd be chasing something like cmg to short it and it's probably still lower i mean i said i said 350 but you know you're you're gonna pay way 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 higher price now to to do that trade okay now I'm sure everyone that that is an active trader has heard about the fact that Amazon in second quarter of 2017 will be buying WFM and one of the very interesting things I find about this and is a great example of institutional money is that uh, some of the very big investors uh, in WFM were pushing for the sale of the company so they were pushing for the sale of the company because the performance of the stock wasn't where they wanted for the money they wanted to make in it. And WFM, prior to the sale announcement coming out, which is this is a gap up here, the stock had several gap downs. Here's a gap down, and I know these are really squished. Here's a gap down, here's a gap down. Bottom line is WFM was in a downtrend, and the investors were pushing for sale of the company. And so there again, there was a hedge fund that was pushing for the sale. And it actually is happening. So do you see the power of huge, big money in stocks in the market? It's there. And you absolutely can make money if you're with it. But if you're not, you're going to get run over. Okay. Now let's just briefly go over here what a gap is. And I know this is really small because I wanted to show all the data in the WFM. But a gap, for those of you that don't know, is just when a stock closes at one price the day before and opens at a different price the next day. So in this case here, I know this is really, really small. But WFM closed up here around 48 something and then gapped down here in this day around 43 something. This was back in early 2015. Then it did it again here. Okay, this is, you know, fall of 2015. And then it kind of sideways for a, more than a year. And then it did a gap up here. And this was, you know, the sale was announced and then this happened. So the stock's just going to sideways here because I think they announced they're going to buy it at 43 something or whatever. Or maybe it was 42. I don't remember what the exact price was. Either way, it, you know, the, the people that control the stock actually, you know, force the sale. And so when you're day trading or when you're doing options or when you're doing swing trades, why would you want to be against the people that are controlling it? And how are they controlling it? They're either buying the stock or they're selling their stock. Like, for example, let's just say that the sale didn't go through. The fund that owned a big percentage of this stock in here might have dumped it. They might have dumped it with profit. They might have dumped it break even. They might have dumped it with a loss. I'd have to look up and see what the, what, what, how much the fund owned of it and what they had paid for it. But they might have dumped it anyways, even with a loss, to put their money in something else. Okay? Clearly, you see something like that CMG. You know, what's happening here? Let me just go back. This, this is selling. I mean, somebody's dumping this thing today. 
and they are dumping it massively, okay? Now the reason, the news or whatever, is neither here nor there. The fact is, it's, it's getting dumped, okay? In fact, I wouldn't even be surprised if that gap's down tomorrow morning, that CMG. All right, does anyone have any questions up here about what I'm talking about, about institutional money? Because this is very, very important. And this is really how you can make money in stocks. Again, as I was saying, I prefer to short, okay? But it's definitely, definitely one of these things where you can, you can take trades in either directions, but the, you know, the moves that happen in selling happen much faster. But either way, if you want to profit, you have to be with this big money. Now, as I was saying, why short? Just CMG is just a great example today because of the fact that shorting panic, it's panic selling, okay? Panic selling, somebody got sick today. All of a sudden, everybody's panicking, and they're selling their stock in the CMG. So that is, is, it's an edge. It gives you an edge to see that, to know the stock's going down, okay? And any questions here, you can write it in the room. We have a question here. Where do you find the big money moves? In gaps. I find the big money moves in gaps. And that's what I was trying to show you there, but the but the but it was a little bit small of a chart. I'm going to show you a little bit bigger of a chart here so you can see it. But bottom line is that I'm trading gaps. And I'm trading gaps that actually are being made by institutional money. Not every gap that happens in a chart is being made by institutional money. And this is very, very important. So in other words, I'm looking to short stocks that are gapping down if they rate per my criteria. So I have a strategy and I'm looking to do one trade and the strategy is looking at 26 points in a daily chart to determine if the stock is a long or short in the gap. And that's what I'm doing. Not every gap that ever happens though is playable, okay? So you have to find the good ones. And, and that's what I'm talking about. Here, I just Googled it. It's $42 per share. I, I wanted to make sure I knew what that was. It's 42 bucks a share that, uh, the, the price is coming out that Amazon's buying WFM for. I wanted to fact check that. But anyways, that's another great example. So when you are wanting to be efficient, also when you're trading, you want to get in and get out. Like for example, today, the traders that are in that CMG, they should get out of that trade. That is a massive, massive trade. You know, could it go lower? Yes. Are you up a lot of money if you did that trade last week when I called it? Yes. Should you get out today? Yes, okay? When you're up, get out. Okay, when your goal is in, are you just got something almost to the dream target? Get out. And this is something very important too. And I tell people, you know, you, you know, every trade is not going to go huge, but you will get some huge ones, and they will happen fast, and then you get out. But you don't, you don't like, you know, take it to the nth degree. You know, wanting every single trade to be massive, massive, massive. You will get them, like today in this one. You will, they will just happen. They will fall out of the sky. But the idea is to get out with money when you're up in trades, okay? So the strategy that I trade is based on stocks gapping, and I'm gonna look at some charts here and show you what I mean. But really, gaps are a very specialized strategy. They have big moves. I'm not predicting the gap itself. Like, I could not have predicted the gap in Netflix last night. I was a surprise, but I could not have predicted it. But after the gap happened, then I would rate a gap like that to determine if it's a long or short. And the case of Netflix today was a long, okay? So, and the case of CMG was a short. So all traders, no matter what kind of trader you are, whether you're a short-term trader, long-term trader, investor, whatever, have you know specialized systems and strategies that they're using to take trades. And, and they also follow and stick to them. Now, this was last Monday. This is, an, this is a retailer, a and This here, this is a bigger way I'm gonna describe a gap. The stock closed here, gap down. Now, this is a daily chart. Stock closed up here around 12 something. Then it gapped down in the morning, opened around 10 something. So here is four o'clock at night, boom. This is 9.30 in the morning when the market opens. Because the US market has a close and open, stocks gap. And the market gaps a lot too, almost every day. So then I get up in the morning, and before 9.30, I am rating this stock, a and F, that's gapping down, and I'm determining before 9.30 if I want to short it or if I don't want to short it. And I wanted to short it, and it worked. Now here's another one here that fell through. The moving averages are, this is the 200 period moving average. This is the 50, this is the 20, this is the 8. I have very clean charts. 
I don't use a lot of stuff on here. Just These are just basic candlesticks, volumes down here, moving price. I like a white background. I always have a clock. Okay, I just use very, very clean charts so I can see what's really happening in the gap. And there's even these things here, I don't really need them. The moving averages are there, but they're, it, they're just there as a support system. It's not the reason I'm taking the trade. Okay, just so you know that. So what's it about gaps that makes them so profitable? Because they're made with institutional money and they happen out of nowhere. Like it could happen for any reason at all. News, data, economic data, an earnings report, a sector gap, like the day that WFM was announced, um, then uh, you know a lot of competitors flipped the other direction. A lot of them gapped down based on the WFM news. So it's an event that happens, and that's what's so powerful. And the event creates everybody that notices a stock. They're 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 noticing it. What should we do? Should we sell it? Should we buy it? Should we dump it? Should we short it? Should we do something? And I always trade stocks at a volume. And, and that's really how you make money. Because the people that are running funds and stuff, they're not trading crap. They're not trading penny stocks. They're not trading cheap stuff. They're just not trading crap. And I would never put my money in that stuff. It's very, very risky. And you cannot you know, consistently make money doing those things without a high, high amount of risk. And, and although I take risk when I trade, it's a, it's, a, it's a calculated risk, which is way, way different. And I also put stops in. And in the case of an option, you don't, you don't really have a stop. You have a fixed risk that you took when you took the trade with the quantity of the amount of contracts that you take because you can't lose more than the contract position size. Although you still need to manage your trades. So how do you pick which gap to trade every day? Because there's tons and tons to do. There's hundreds, thousands every morning. You need a system to pick the gap. And this is what I do. So I have a 26 point rating system. It is a professional bearish gap rating system. I prefer to short. This gives me an edge. I'm in and out in the morning between 9.30 and 10. I'm doing the quick moves. And even if you do the options, you are still in and out of them looking for the flush, for the quick move, okay? Which could happen in one day or it could happen in an hour, you know, and something like that with the CMG, okay? The idea is to look for trades to make money consistently that have big moves, okay? So otherwise, you, you have to take such massive position size. I don't want to have to take 20,000 shares of something to make any money. 2,000, 3,000, 4,000. You know, those are big sizes, but it's not like massive, okay? It's just that's it's a normal trader, active trader, professional trader size. So you're looking for the big move. And if, you, if something drops a dollar and you've got 3,000 shares, you're going to make three grand. Okay, so you want it to move. And typically I'm looking for a buck. 50 cents I'm happy with many days. 60 cents, 80 cents. The hog today ended up moving 80 some cents. That's good enough, people. Okay, you're in and you're out. And I also want to be able to predict the move. And if I can't see it in the pre-market, then in my mind I can't predict it. And therefore I'm not trading it. So I'm very focused on the points which tell me where it's going to go ahead of time. And that's how I'm able to call trades like HOG and the CMG. So I'm, I'm trading on that one minute chart, which you're going to look at here in a minute. But that's how I get the good risk to reward because I take the trade and I put a stop. So I'm really looking at a whole big wide time frame, which what institutions are doing on the daily. And I'm saying the stock is a short or I'm saying the stock is a long. But again, today we're focusing on the shorts, but I'm looking at the day chart for that. But I'm looking at the one minute because I'm an active day trader for the accuracy to get in and out in the time frame, okay? And this really, really gives me an edge. Most day traders do not trade till after 10 o'clock, and I'm out of most of my trades by 10 o'clock. It puts me less at risk. I've usually got my goal in for the day, and if the trade doesn't work, then, it, then I'm out quick, okay? So I'm not sitting at my desk all day. Your eyes get tired, your brain gets tired. You will not make good financial decisions based on your risk or money if you are at your desk every day for six and a half hours. I guarantee you, you will make more mistakes the longer that you trade, that you're sitting at your computer looking at stuff. You will, you will look at five different things. You'll think everything looks good, then you'll think everything looks bad. You'll change your mind. You'll be up, then you'll give the money back. I mean, I've been there, people. You know, I mean, all the mistakes that I made at the beginning is what I realized, and then I had to force a discipline on myself when I was making money consistently in the morning doing my system when I first created it back in 2008, 2009, then I started forcing myself to leave the house. I would leave the house and go to the gym 
by no later than 11 o'clock every day so that I wouldn't get sucked into afternoon trades. And I'm not saying you can't make money in the afternoon, but I'm saying that, you know, if you want to make money day trading, you got to look at a certain time frame where the opportunity exists and in gaps, it is in the morning. And I've looked at so many charts and so many different strategies before I decided to do gaps that I'm telling you, you get the most momentum, the most volatility and the biggest moves in gaps that happen in that period of the day. Otherwise, you are at the whimsy of the market or whatever's happening in the sector and you're basically trend trading. And even if you get a stock that's in a, a downward downtrend, you're not gonna be able to short it every day. Even if you have a stock in an uptrend, you're not gonna be able to go long every day. So what do you do every day? You know, you have to have something that you can do every day. And, and again, there might be one or two days I don't get a train, but for the most part, uh, you know, I'm trading, you know, four days a week at least, five days during the earning season. So I have a checklist that I go through, boom, boom, boom. This is what gives me an edge when I'm trading. This is what I teach in my class. And it's a plan of action. It's telling you, Melissa, this is a good one. Short A and F, you know, short hog. It's telling me the stock is lower in the day. Target's 46 and hog today. You know, these are the things that you, you will learn if you come to me. But, you know, momentum trading is something that, you know, you can't, it, once you start seeing these moves and, 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 you know, they see them happen so fast, like like CMG today, I mean, you'll never go back. It's like if you're used to scalping or you're used to just getting pennies and pennies and a couple pennies and things, once you start to trade a momentum and you take a trade and all of a sudden you're up a huge amount of money so quickly, there's you'll never go back. I'm just telling you right now, you will never go back. The way to make money as a day trader is momentum trading. People that are normal, average people do not have several hundred thousand dollars or several millions of dollars to take positions in stocks, to hold them, to get massive, massive moves on the day over weeks and months and years. You know, people that are day traders are not investors. You're not trying to be Warren Buffett. You're trying to get in a move. And if you want to do this and make a couple thousand dollars a week, you've got to get stocks that move. Okay. And they really have to move. And the reason that I like the shorts is because they just have these explosive selling actions. All right, let me just see if there's any questions here. No, but I think I got the last one. Um, all right, let's talk about the hog. So here we have the hog. Hog is a short. Okay, obviously it was a short today. The clock is in front of this, but this is a one minute chart. Stock gap down, open here. This was a big one. Close last night all the way up here at 50 something, 52 something, I know this is small. Open in the morning down here. Gap down like $7 overnight. Big gap down for the hog. Open, dropped, rally, boom. Sh I shorted it. I shorted it, actually got a little early here. I shorted it here and then it dropped. Actually could have got out here. I had to stop up here. So time of the day is 9.30. See the clock? Here we have 10 o'clock. Then it rallied, boom. So anyways, I got out in here, but you could have gotten out here because it had this big move up. So you could have done it here, you could have done it here, you could have done it here and got out, you could have done it here and got out. So again, where are you in and out? Between 9.30 and 10. So this, wherever you got filled and got it, is 80 cents, 60 cents, 55 cents of a move, depending on where you got in and where you get out. Anyways, I shorted it, 46.70, okay? Risk for this one for me where I got filled with 60 cents. Share quantity, 3,000. I didn't hold it all the way down to 46, but it did go there and bounced. Got out, 46.15. Profit is $1,650 in less than 15 minutes. So here's the accuracy, okay? Taking the entry, getting the stop in, getting the quantity size, you get the, get the drop. So it goes, as soon as I take the trade, I get the drop. So I'm taking it and I get the drop. Boom, these red bars are the selling. This is selling. Okay, do, do. So this is what I'm looking at, but I'm predicting the hog based on the gap in the pre-market, which I'm not showing you all this in here, but there's pre-market data. I take it off when I trade on the day, all right? So the fact that I know I could do this here and short it, and that hog was not along in here, is what you know gives me the edge and then i'm in and out very very quickly now a and f was a bleeder a and f was i was aggressive in this again time of the day here shorted it boom put the stop these red bars are selling 
So what did it do? It gapped. It closed up here 1220-ish, opened in the morning around 1070-ish, open drop, and I shorted it. Here's the selling. So you're shorting the selling action. You're shorting the panic. Here, this is the edge, okay? And the fact that you're shorting it all. I mean, professional traders you know, know how to short, but I think a lot of active day traders really are not very good at shorting. I mean, they just really are afraid to short. They will not just short a thing like this. They want something to rally before they short it. They want it to back up. They think this is too big. Boom, I'm in. Why? Because of the gap. Because I rated the gap. So anyways, I'm in aggressively here and I'm getting this. And actually, I get out of this here, but it kept going. So here's another one. Went to the dream target. $10 was a real target. Broke. Went to nine something. This has been falling actually almost every day since. Panic. Shorting. The edges in the time of the day. Edges in the entry. Knowing that you're going to watch this. Because if, if I don't know that I'm going to watch ANF before this opens here at 930, then I'm not getting any of this. Then what am I doing? I'm shorting it like here. And then it's got to go to some crazy number to get it. Do you see what I mean? This is less stress getting it having the conviction, knowing I want to do it. This was last week to another retailer. These things are just getting hammered. Of course, okay? Boom, you could have shorted this here, fell off a planet again. I actually didn't get this one in here right away because it was a little bit low of a volume in the morning till it's open. Anyways, I did this over here and got the sell off in the course. You could have done the whole thing. This went big too. So again, where is this opening up here? You base it off of the close from the open, you rate the gap in the morning. So whether you take it here or you take it here, you're in and out again for the quick trade for the sell-off. So as soon as you take the trade, you're up. As soon as you short it, it drops. As soon as you short it, it goes. And you will learn how to do this in my class, but the point is it's really the gap. It's really knowing that it's cores, knowing, getting the direction Okay, because if you're going long course, you're gonna lose. If you're shorting course, you're gonna make money. Here was another one. This was just a small baby one from last week too. STX, again, one minute chart, stock closed up here, gap down, boom. Open, rallied, short it, get the drop. This is, you're just looking, short to get the drop, short to get the drop. 9.30 and 10, fast, quick, in and out. You just get it. See here, this isn't something massive. But it's money, okay? It's, it's money, and it's about the consistency. Consistently picking the right stock, getting the entry, getting it into the sell-off, like all of these here, do, 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 and the hop. Any question from anybody so far? Now, I, I have all this in here. I'm, I'm, I'm just going to really quickly run through these. This, these were all the last trades since the, since the beginning of May. I've been trying to track things better for people so they can really see the money that they would have made if they had been trading with me. It, it, you know, it has been a good year, 2017. And, and I've been thinking about increasing my own personal risk for earnings season, which is pretty much starting now. But you know, if, if you, if you want to make approximately $1,000 a day, you're pretty much going to have to risk about $1,000 a day to make sure that you hit that number. So if that's your goal and you want to do it for a career, Here's all the trades that you could have done really in this last period. Cisco, you could have made 900 bucks. Foot Locker worked, was off from Memorial Day course, made 700. HPE was a winner, EXPR was a loser. RH was a good short, 1260. These are short, short, shorts, okay? HDS, that was a really good one. You can look it up, it was a massive, massive red bar. That was a huge day, it made over four grand. DLH, 1000, Urban 930, pay was tough. Did two trades in pay, one was a loser, one was a winner. 612 no train sometimes on mondays are slow cake was a good one but really didn't get enough going ended up only making 400 bucks but it was money hrb 800 kr was a good day too 2080 you can look these daily charts up and see the reds actually the spy was along in here which is funny i'll tell you this was a long there was no good shorts that day uh target 1200 spy 180 if you had taken all the calls i gave in the trading room this is what they were adobe was a loss Oracle was a loss. That was a tough two days. And BBBY was a big one, 3550 bucks. Okay, these are the last 32 trades. Then BBBY was a follow-through continuation gap, $800. ALDR was one loss and a small win. 
Still was down on the day though with that. PayX with 1,050 profit. Fred 2150, that was a good short. Nike $1,100 was off for the holiday. Then a &F was last week, good trade, and I did not hold this all the way down. I mean, I would have made more money if I'd held it longer. 1470. Cores again, I didn't hold that long either. Would have made more money in the cores, 950, but I like to trade the morning. 712, no trades. STX, $700 profit. And Friday was really hard for me. Two losers on Friday. Anyways, turned it around this week, made 1650 in hog, and all in all, everything's been good. So $26,395 you could have made in these last few trades here that I just have in the room if you'd risk a thousand bucks. And it's, I'm running about a 78% win ratio. It was over 80 last week, but with the two losses on Friday, I'm at 78. So of 32 trades, it's just a snapshot of the calendar year. Uh, 25 winners and uh, seven losers in the last 32 trades. Now, I do have a tracking video on YouTube if you want to go look at it, which I have all the trades from January that are winners and losers for the whole year, plus these ones. I have to update it and put it in a big video, but you can see the ones prior to May 18th in YouTube. So a lot of people ask me, how much money do you need? It, you know, you can open up a prop account. You need minimum 2,500. A retail account, you're going to need a minimum of 25,000. If you have questions about that, you can ask me, but I'm not a broker. You can really trade anywhere as long as you can actively day trade. You have to go with whatever broker gives you their amount of risk and what they require for an opening deposit. Now, I'm really quick, quickly going to talk here about something. And I, I know we started a little bit late, so we'll see what time I end up ending here. But... You know, a lot of people talk to me and I have to just break it down for people in reality versus craziness. And I think it's a good form to do it because there's a lot of speakers today. And I know that, you know, investors has uh, responsible people talk, but there are a lot of people out there that are teaching uh, systems that are totally irresponsible. And it is problematic. And the, and the thing is that it gives educational companies a bad name because they say things that are crazy. Now, what is crazy? And I get the emails like everybody else does. Somebody sent me something that you can make $8,000 in 30 days with a $1,000 account. That's crazy. That is not likely and what I would call irresponsible. Okay. Now, what sounds even crazier? This one here, this, is, this was insanity. $250 that you could make 18 grand in a month. That's ridiculous. And anyone that believes that is crazy too. Okay. Can you make money in the market? The answer is yes. Can you make $1,000 a day on average if you risk $1,000 in a trade? Yes. Can you make around 500 bucks a day if you risk around $500 a day? Yes. That's not crazy. That's reality. The problem with the industry itself is that people are out there saying these insane things and being totally irresponsible and people believe them. People believe them. Okay. You can make money in the market, but not doing crazy things. Okay. You will get trades like CMG. I told you, you could have made 21 grand in that trade, but you would have had to risk three grand. And maybe you didn't want to do that, okay? All the people that did that trade made money. I, I mean, someone in my room risked 3,000 at least, I'm sure. But the point is, you're not going to get those every day. And $3,000 is still a lot of money. The idea of taking $250 and making $18,000 in a month is absolutely irresponsible. And there's places out there all over the place that are telling people that. So you have to kind of be smart about it. I mean, you, you can make money in the market. You can. You know, you, you know you're not going to take a dollar and make a million dollars in a month. I mean, that's just crazy. You know, you have to be strict. You have to learn how to do it. You have to have a good system. You have to have an edge. Helps if you have somebody like me guiding you or another mentor that, especially someone that can call the trades that I do live in the room every day. But, you know, you got to be a little realistic. It's not insane to make profits in the stock market consistently or even do it for a career. It is insane to think that you're going to do this and get rich with absolutely no money at all or without having to spend any money in a class or learning anything. That's crazy, okay? You will go through your lickings with the market if you try to teach yourself. And I did because it took me three years to learn my system. I'm, you know, I'm over that hump now and I'm long past that point, but I would never want to relive that point in my life period. I don't know how I made it through it. But, you know, you know, now I make it so easy for people because I teach them. But people still have to follow what I do. And if they go off a rocker and they don't listen to what I say, then they're going to go through their own lickings, the same thing. It took me a long time to figure this out. I did just listen to what I say, but you've got to learn it. And, and my class is $5,000. <laughs> it's not 250 bucks, you know. But the idea that you can make over 26 grand in such a short period of time is amazing, okay. 
So, you know, getting back to what I was saying, think about the fast trading, the way that your, your brain works. You know, it's so much less stressful for you if you can get in and get out as soon as you're up. You know, staying in a trade and waiting for hours and hours, it's very stressful for your brain because it's never over till you're out of the trade, even if you're up money in it, something could happen. Like actually CMG, I'm sure there were people that were long in that stock today. In fact, I have to go back and look at the, the miniature time frames and see what it was at before it dropped. But I'm sure there were people that were long that and they were probably in it in the morning and they probably just got hurt in it too. So anyways, my system is about a checklist. I'm very efficient with what I do, and I think this is invaluable, and it actually helps you to do this for a career. It's a structure to follow, and obviously, if you want to learn, you can come and do my class and be educated by me, but, you know, I'm, I'm going to be realistic with you. I'm going to tell you what it is. You know, of every 10 trades, two expect to be losers, eight will be winners. Um, you do have to use stops. I do focus mostly on shorts, and you have to have an account to trade as well, um, and you have to learn the system. Now, let me just see here with the questions. Uh, I don't really consider volume except for the fact that I'm not trading stocks without enough volume. So it's not a consideration other than the fact that I just won't trade stocks that don't have any volume. Um, let me just see here. How do you find the stocks at Gap? Is there a scanner? I don't have a scanner, but you can buy scanners. I just use the top 20 down list in both the NASDAQ and New York Exchange, and then there's a top 20 um, up lists, and you can get that on any platform for free. So I just use the free one, um, and any platform should have that. So you get 40 picks in either direction with the free scanner that you get the top 20 list. So that's 40 ups and 40 downs. And usually most of them are in there. Like Hog was in there this morning. That's plenty to do. Here's some. Here's one of the days we did the KR. Some people wrote some nice stuff. Anyways, I'm, I, I teach normal people how to do this. I mean, I actually, it was funny, there was a guy that I taught uh, this past month and after the class he was so cute he said he was really really scared but then after the class he realized it you know he, he he got it because he had never traded in his life before and he certainly didn't know what a gap was and he was a brand new person so i think that you know wherever you come from whatever your background whether you've traded or not you certainly can learn my system um and sometimes if you don't know anything about gaps it's better off because i think you don't have any bad habits i think a lot of traders have bad habits and you, you know you either find a way to correct the habits and fix fix what you're doing or you know you're going to continue to make the same mistakes anyways in the live trading room i call the entry i call the stop i call the targets and that is a support system for being in the room like the hawk so the trading room itself, which I run, is a great support system. However, you need to do the class that I teach in order to be a member of the trading room. So if you want to trade, you can do this for a career. You could do it on the side. It's only just an hour in the morning. Prep in the morning before we trade and then trade. I run the trading room and I close it every day by 11 o'clock. So if you'd like to learn how to make money in the market, my class is called the Golden Gap Course. It's a complete system to trade. It's a full two-day course on how to strategically find, pick, and play stocks that are professional bearish gaps. Next class is July 29th and 30th from 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. Eastern Time. The class is online. You can be anywhere in the world and take it. Email me at melissa at thestockswish.com if you want to sign up. You must email me. You cannot sign up on the website. Cost of the class is $49.99. You can go to the website and you know learn more about me or email me. If you'd like a trial of the trading room this week, you can email me too for that. And I decided to do this special great just great opportunity for people i'm going to give the gap options letter free till the end of 2017. i have a letter which just gives those options trades like cmg and i'm going to give it free to anybody that signs up for the class next weekend by this friday the 21st that i mean you could pay for the class in one of those trades so if you want to sign up for this for the class for the golden gap course you will receive the option letter which is i'm just calling the trades like the first trade i told you about the cmg you get them emailed to you then you can do the options trades and you can do the day trades with me if you want to in the room. So if you sign up for the Golden Gap class by the 21st, you get the letter free to the end of the year. There's this is another good one. I don't want to get, I know we're running late here, but I did call Google Long, which was another good one, but this was a long. So I had called this uh, last week on the 12th. Cost of this was a little bit higher than CMG, but again, great trade, almost 200% return on investment in a week and that is still higher target on that if it continues is 970 strike price that i call was to buy the um the google calls 950. okay any questions um no i like to 
equity morning day trade. I'm day trading. I'm shorting in the morning equities. But I'm telling you, you can use my system for the options too. And that's why I have the letter. So it's whatever works for you. And you can do it with swing trades. Um, I think I answered everything here. Does anybody have any questions really quick? Because we're running out of time. Seriously, seriously, if you want to call me or talk to me or have questions or want to, you know, check out the room, email me at Melissa at stockswish.com. You can go to my YouTube and sign up under the Stock Swish. I am going to do a video on CMG, and I'll do an email on that tonight. People are, my people are very happy right now today. <laughs> that much I can tell you. <laughs> it's a good day for the Stock Swish, people. <sighs> All right. Thank you, investors. Thank you, Renee. Thanks for having me. Britain, thank you, Melissa. Always a pleasure having you on. I appreciate you taking the time out of your day and presenting Target today.